quiet strength epilogue. I was pretty sure I didn't know anyone in Italy. Lauren and I were walking through Rome in the summer of 2005 when I spotted a guy who looked awfully familiar. As I walked past him, he immediately recognized me. Coach Dungey, it's me, Reagan Upshaw. Of course it was. Reagan was vacationing with his wife and children in Rome, just as we were. We made introductions all around, and then, before I could say anything else, Reagan brought up our time together with the Buccaneers. Reagan was one of the players that Tony coached when he was head coach at the Buccaneers. Coach, I just want to thank you, Reagan said. I remember how you were always talking about responsibility and doing things right and the importance of the -the off-the-field stuff. Every time you said those things, I always thought, Dog, why are you on me about all this stuff that doesn't matter? But those things you were telling us, those things are the reason I'm married today and why my kids are doing so well. Some of those things just made no sense to me at the time, but they make sense now. I can't thank you enough for staying on me. The next time I would see Reagan was at our hotel the night before the Super Bowl. Tariq Glenn, our Pro Bowl offensive tackle, had been Reagan's teammate at the University of California, and Reagan had come to see him play. Once again, Reagan thanked Lauren and me for the example we had been to him, and then joined Tariq at our chapel service. I could really see a difference in Reagan, ten years after missing those appearances at the fourth grade classroom. So this is a fun flashback to when he was the coach of the Buccaneers. And um, if you'll remember, he told the story of one of the only times he's actually really lost his temper and raised his voice with his players. And that was when one of his players was supposed to go see this fourth grade class and missed the appearance two different times. And that player ended up being this guy that he runs into in Italy, Reagan Upshaw. And it's neat because all these years later, you know, he didn't know if he really had an impact on Reagan or not. And Reagan says to him, hey, like, my life turned out the way it did because of you and the lessons that you instilled in my life. Um, So what a cool thing for Tony to hear, because I think sometimes we wonder, you know, are we making a difference at all? Or, you know, did what I say to that person actually get through to them? And so it's neat that Reagan actually is like, hey, you you did get through to me and you changed my life. So that's that's a neat thing for Tony. And, And I think for him, little moments like that are, like, almost more important or definitely more important than winning a game, even a game as big as the Super Bowl. Lauren has a friend whose brother watched the Super Bowl from his home in Michigan. He does construction work and has been wrestling for some time with the feeling that he should do something to help in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Okay, Hurricane Katrina was a really bad hurricane um, that happened right around the time that this book is taking place. He listened to Jim Ursay speak during the trophy presentation about the Florida tornado victims of 2007 and the fact that the Colts shouldn't and wouldn't celebrate without reaching out to those who were hurting. Then he heard me talk about trying to do things the Lord's way. He felt moved to act. He placed his house on the market and sold it in one day. He is now living in Mississippi, working full-time to rebuild that area, helping one family at a time. I had the privilege of speaking at the Tampa Bay Festival with Louis Palou a month after the Super Bowl. Even though I had been gone from the Buccaneers for five years, I was presented with a key to the city. It was a thrill to accept that key, again in the rain, but even more of a thrill to watch so many young people dedicate their lives to Christ at the festival. When it was over, I headed back to Tampa International Airport to wait for my flight back to Indianapolis. I found myself in the middle of a big group of Colts fans, and everyone wanted to talk about the Super Bowl, get autographs, and take pictures. However, there was one woman who waited until we were ready to board the plane before she approached. She told me she felt she had something of a connection with me. My best friend had a baby in Indianapolis recently, and your sister, Lauren, was her doctor. My sister is really good, I said. No, no, your sister is tremendous, she said. I nodded. She continued, when my friend's baby was born, his esophagus was not attached to his stomach. It didn't look like he was going to make it. Your sister not only treated him, she prayed with the family, gave them books on prayer, and spent a lot of extra time with them. The baby's doing well now, and they're so grateful, not just for the medical attention, but also for what she meant to them emotionally and spiritually through it all. At that moment, I was prouder of being Lauren's brother than coach of the Colts. That's what this is all about, touching lives, building a legacy, not necessarily on the field, but with those in places that most people will never see, trying to be faithful in the position God has given me, 
I love coaching football, and winning a Super Bowl was a goal I've had for a long time, but has never been my purpose in life. Okay, and that's the difference. That's the distinction between a goal and a purpose. He said his goal is to win the Super Bowl, but that's not his purpose in life. My purpose in life is to simply glorify God. We have to be careful that we don't let the pursuit of our life's goals, no matter how important they seem, cause us to lose sight of our purpose. I coach football, but the good I can do to glorify God along the way is my real purpose. I want to help people see the path to eternal life through Christ, to enjoy an abundant life now, and to fulfill their God-given purposes here. We are all role models to someone in this world, and we can all have an impact for good. Okay, so it's a neat way to end his book by saying, you know, hey, we can all have an impact. And he shares that quick example of running into Reagan all those years later. And he also shares the example of, you know, the guy who moved to Mississippi to help families out who had lost their um, homes. And then his sister, right, who helps people every day as a doctor. So, right, we can all help someone in this world. We can all have an impact for good. Right, so like, what is your purpose in life? We can all have goals, right? But what is your purpose? And Tony says, you know, his purpose is to simply glorify God. Um, so what what a cool book, what a cool guy. Um, and it's a great story to share with all of us um, and serve some great reminders as to how we should be living our lives.